Welcome to Spread of Islam to Asia, Africa, and Spain. This is Melinda Klein. The Arabs of pre-Islamic times were polytheistic. This means a belief in many gods. Within a communal faith involving members of the tribes and they had no priesthood. The Arab supreme deity was symbolized by a sacred meteorite black stone that had in ancient times fallen from the heavens. It was located in Mecca. In the 5th and 6th century, the economic importance across the peninsula was improved with maritime and the caravan desert trade pursued by nomadic Bedouins. With political disorder across the former Roman Empire, the Arabs by the 7th century had a window of opportunity, once united to expand and conquer in the name of their god, Allah. For the most part, trade was good. It spread ideas, communication, knowledge, culture, technology, along with negative effects such as disease and political takeover by a strong, mobile military power. By the 11th century, there were problems. The Mamluks strengthened their image. In the 1030s, the Seljuk family established a Turkish Muslim state. Their leader was a sultan. The territory was from Baghdad to Afghanistan. They expanded to Syria and Anatolia, present-day Turkey, and brought an end to the Byzantine Empire there. Their southern reach retreated north to Constantinople. But Turks were pastoralists, and cities based on irrigation were built by Arab Muslims. The cities fell into disrepair and neglect. Culture and intellectual pursuits were not one of the aims of the Turks. Iran and Iraq were mismanaged and lacked serious government revenues. Christian Crusades in 1099 recaptured Jerusalem during this weak time of Muslim lands under Turkish rule. But the Muslims, in reaction to the European Crusades, united to retake Jerusalem. Under Saladin, Muslims organized in Damascus. Saladin took over Egypt and Syria, with Jerusalem conquered, taking it from the Europeans. Muslim jihad with Europeans continued until about 1250 AD. Muhammad did not set down laws to govern. Instead, a judicial system developed in the principalities over the centuries. Governments of Islam adhered to precepts set down in the Quran to resolve issues. However, interpretation between Sunni and Shiite Muslims differed. In the spread of Islam, people who conducted trade in cities and ports were the first converts. It happened slower than in the countryside. Under Islamic influence of organization and prophets, Agricultural areas expanded with the planting of citrus, fruits, rice, cotton, and sugar, while the state of Islam created new territory and influences. To keep Islamic traditions growing, madrasas, or learning centers, taught the Quran and Arabic language to Persians, Turks, Indians, and Spaniards. Ibn Battuta lived from 1304 to 1369. During his lifetime, he traveled greatly, some 75,000 miles in 29 years. This pilgrimage was throughout the Muslim world, including Spain, West Africa, India, and China. Islamic traditions spread along North Africa, followed the Nile River to the Red Sea to Indonesia, to the east and south to East Africa, and across the Sahara to the west. The expansion of trade and commercial contacts greatly promoted the process of conversion. 
Sundadia was a military leader of the Malinke people of West Africa. Mali was located in the Sahal, bordered to the south by the gold-rich Niger River and included salt fields in the Sahara to the north. Like Sundadia before him, Mansa Musa ruled Mali for 25 years as well. He is best remembered for his pilgrimage to Mecca in 1324. After his visit to Cairo on the way to Mecca, he put so much money into circulation that the value of gold in Egypt was depressed for years. Ibn Battuta visited Mali during the reign of Musa's successor, Mansa Suleiman. In his journals, Batuta recorded how the government and the Africans worshipped Allah and taught their children from the Quran. As pictured here, this is the process to make salt from ancient times. Africans dug huge pits for salt and minerals along with copper and iron used for metal and weapons. Salt and gold were highly prized exports and in demand by traders from the Mediterranean and the Indian Ocean areas. Unlike in Sub-Saharan Africa, Northern India was conquered by Muslim warriors by the 1200s. Muslims who had invaded India were violent to Hindus. Muslims wanted prophets while trying to spread their faith. Warriors raided homes and palaces for gems and gold and killed resisting Hindus by the 1000s. Hindus, a pacifist lot on the whole, could not compete with the Muslim Turks militarily who used powerful crossbows as mounted swift moving cavalry. Muslim adventurers from Islam excitedly followed leaders to India to impose their rule over weak and decentralized Hindu principalities of the Gupta Empire. Maritime trade in the Indian Ocean connected Europe to Asia through Muslim traders until the 15th century Iberian explorers, the Spanish and the Portuguese. Ship technology and navigation advanced after 1000 AD. The largest vessel at the time was the Chinese junk, which could carry 100 passengers and 1,000 tons of cargo. However, there was the Chinese Dao, a small and familiar vessel in the Red Sea and Indian Ocean. Arabian skilled pilots on Dao's guided vessels on open waters using navigation knowledge of the stars. Aden and Yaman had the perfect climate combined with a location at the juncture between Europe, the Middle East, Africa, India, and Asia. Traders from these parts bought and sold luxury and manufactured goods that included pearls from the Red Sea, spices from Southeast Asia, cotton and beads from India, horses from Arabia, and local trade goods including grain, textiles, dyes, and opium. By the 14th century, Muslim traders had a monopoly on maritime trade, spreading to the Malabar coast and the Malay Peninsula, the shortest route to China. Malacca as a port city had allied itself with Siam, now Thailand, and China, offering protection from raiders and a safe passage to trading vessels. Like Aden, Malacca was cosmopolitan and reached its height after 1500. 